In this video, you'll learn how to read registry values from a Windows Forms application. In .NET programs, you can store application settings in a configuration file, but the registry remains a pretty good place to store user settings. The registry is also the place to check a computer for installed unmanaged software or hardware devices. We'll start by creating a new Windows Forms application. The .NET framework makes working with the registry much simpler than what you were used to in earlier versions of Visual Basic. As this demonstration will illustrate, the .NET registry classes provide an easy-to-use, object-oriented way to access the system registry. In the first part of this demonstration, we'll look at how to read user configuration data from the registry. Typically, this user data is loaded at program startup. For demonstration purposes, I'll use a tree view control to display the user settings for the application that are stored in the registry. The registry architecture provides a simple structure for managing user data. Settings are stored under the software key of the current user hive. The software key is further defined by company keys representing software vendors. And then, under the company key, you'll find one or more subkeys representing that company's programs. This is the place for storing information for the current user of the program, like their name or menu and other display settings, for example. The registry class is contained in the Microsoft Win32 namespace. At the top of the code file here, I'll add an import statement for this namespace so I can access the registry class directly in the code below. The registry class has shared properties that represent the six main subtrees of the registry. In the first line of code, I'll use the current user property and then call the open subkey method to create an instance of a registry key object for the company subkey. Then on the next line, I'll display the name of the company key as the root node in the tree view. Then I'll start a for next loop to render the product keys for the company. I'll call the get subkey names function on the company key object to return an array of strings representing the product keys for this company. The string variable product name will hold each of those names as I iterate through the loop. And here on the first line of the loop, I'll add a child node to the tree using the name of the product key. On the next line, I'll create a new registry key object representing the product key. To do this, I'll call the open subkey function again, but this time on the company key object, and I'll use the product name variable as the input parameter. I'll start a secondary for next loop on the next line to iterate through the values of the product key. Here, I'll use the get value names function of the product key object to get back an array containing the names of the product key values. The string variable value name will hold the name of the value for each iteration of the loop. I'll use the value name string to add a new child node to the product node of the tree view. And then on the next line, I'll add the actual text of the value using the getValue function of the registry key object. Then on the last line of the subloop, I'll add the value node to the product node of the tree view structure. I'll pin back a few of these open windows so you can see all the code. Once the secondary loop is finished, I'll update the tree view structure by adding a new product node to the company node. Finally, I'll close the registry key by calling the close method of the registry key object. I'll do the same thing at the end of the primary loop. First, I'll complete the rendering of the data on the form by adding the company node to the tree view control, and then I'll close the registry key. All right, the code is ready to go, so we'll run the program now. I'll click the Get User Settings button, and there you see at the top is the company key, followed by one product key, and finally the values beneath it. As I expand each value, you see the associated value displayed. Now I'll close the application. Next, I'll demonstrate another common scenario for reading from the registry. Let's assume our demo application makes use of Microsoft Word. Before we can do any meaningful work, we'll first need to make sure that Word is installed on the machine. We can do that by looking for Word's class name key in the class's root hive of the registry. I'll update the properties of the new button I've added to the form, and then we'll go to the click event handler for the button. Here the code is very simple. Like before, I'm going to create a new registry key object. 
In this case, notice that I use the class's root property of the registry class instead of the current user property because we're examining a different subtree of the registry. And like before, I'll use the open subkey function to create an instance of the registry key object. The input parameter here is the class identifier for Microsoft Word. Next, all I need to do is make sure this function returned a valid registry key object. If the open subkey function can't find the specified key, it returns a null object. In that case, I'll return a message saying that Word isn't installed on the machine. Otherwise, I'll know it did return a valid registry key object, and I'll display a message accordingly. On the following line, I'll close the registry key by calling the close method of the registry key object, as we did before. And that's all there is to it. Now we'll run the program once again. And I'll click the check for MS Word button, and we find out that indeed Word is installed on the machine. In addition to reading from the registry, the registry classes also provide methods for writing data to the registry. In contrast to earlier versions of Visual Basic, you now have a simple-to-use way to incorporate data stored in the registry in your Visual Basic.net programs. Comprehensive access to the registry is just one example of how advanced programming has been made easier for you using the framework classes and Visual Basic.net.